Hello, today I'd like to tell you how to shoot um, timeless video of the Milky Way. The hardest part is actually finding an area that's dark enough and isolated enough from light pollution that you can actually see the Milky Way. And if you don't happen to live in a re region like that, then getting out to a spot where there's no full moon and you actually have good weather and you can actually see the sky um, can also be uh, challenges. So, but let's talk about some of the equipment that you require. Uh, first and foremost, having a nice wide angle lens that's relatively fast is going to be pretty helpful. So here I have a 14 to 24 f2.8 lens. Um, anything wider is probably better. Uh, you can use the 18 millimeter lens. Uh, you can use an 18 2.8, um, but you you know the wider and faster the lens, the better. Um, Second, you're going to need some way, you need, definitely need a tripod. Uh, well, I highly suggest it because that way you're going to have a lot more flexibility of where you place the camera and at what angles and such. Um, and you're also going to need some method to be able to take the pictures at certain interval, intervals. The Nikon, this is the Nikon D300, luckily has uh, a timer built in. Um, some cameras, you may have to get something similar to uh, looks like a uh, shutter release cable except that it has a timer built into that. Um, that'd be called, and these timers are called intervalometers, interval meters, intervalometers. I don't know why they have to come up with a fancy name for it, but they do. <clears throat> and lastly, another suggestion is, especially if it's somewhat chilly, is you get the hand warmers and a rubber band and you rubber band it to the bottom of the lens and this will keep the lens warm and help prevent fogging. Uh, you may need multiples depending on how big the lens is and, and how chilly the environment. So uh, this is step number one. Now I'm going to go a little bit more into detail on some of the settings. Alright, as far as when you set your camera up, there's two important, important parts to remember. One is you want at the most widest angle setting. Um, if you have a fixed camera, then that's not really something you want to be concerned with. But the second thing is you want to look at where you're focused at. Here's the focus ring, and you can see that I actually have a focus scale here. Um, this little hash mark right here tells me what I'm set at, and you want to make sure that you set the focus at infinity. That way you don't have to actually worry about focusing the lens. You know that if it's focused at infinity, the stars are going to be in focus. If you don't have this scale, you're going to probably have to, normally the best way to, to do it is go focus as far out as possible and then back up just a slight bit on the lens. And that might be as, as good as you're going to be able to get it. Now as far as time interval you're going to need to set, you're going to put your camera on its largest possible aperture or smallest possible aperture number. So in this case it would be 2.8. Um, some cameras lenses only go down to 3.5. Basically you want to go with the smallest f-stop number, smallest aperture number that you have available for the lens. You're going to want to set the camera uh, probably for manual and shooting at 30 seconds and take a, you know, I'd shoot a practice shot and see how that looks. Uh, ISO setting is usually 1600 to 3200 um, depending on how, how bright you want it to be given your lens um, what what you have available on your lens. So if you have a 3.5 for instance uh, you might want to shoot somewhere between 2000 and 3200 or depending on how bright the Milky Way is if you want it to be a little bit more intense shoot at 3200. Um, if you're comfortable with your camera ISO settings at 3200 because you're going to start getting a lot of noise in most cameras. If you're not if you don't think the image quality is going to be good at 3200, then shoot at, shoot at 1600. Um, as far as how to shoot it, if you don't have an intervalometer, you can shoot manually. Um, it's going to be quite a lot of work on your half, on your part, just because uh, you're going to have to trigger each one. Just to give you an idea, to get about uh, 10 to 20 seconds of video, you're talking somewhere around. Uh, 300 to 600 individual frames. 
So if you're willing to sit there and fire off the camera 600 times, then um, that might be a good stopgap measure before you get an intervalometer or you get a camera that has one built in. Okay, here's a brief look at the Nikon intervalometer built into the D300. Um, go to the camera, go to interval timer shooting, just put, click over to the right. Uh, you can start now or later. Uh, the interval, this is the interval um, from shutter click to shutter click. This isn't the interval between uh, images. So it's not like the shutter closes, waits 30 seconds, and takes another picture. So if your shutter speed uh, is 30 seconds, you're going to need to have some buffer time. I keep moving this to keep the camera from going into sleep mode. Um, so if you have a 30 second shutter speed, then you're going to want at least 35 to 40 seconds for the camera to be able to, for the shutter to close, um, write the image, prepare the next shot, and then open again. So I would suggest a 30 second shutter to have an interval of 35 seconds. If it's a 25 second um, exposure, then go with 30 seconds to 32 seconds. When you click over next, this is how many shots you want to take. Pretty often, I take about 375 to 425 per sh um, scene, so that roughly works out to be about three and a half to four hours of actual shooting time. Click over, and then when you hit the OK button down here, it, uh, it starts. I'm not going to do that right now. So in summary, if you're going to be using an internal camera's intervalometer, you're not going to need a shutter release cable. Um, basically try to find a dark area, look for the Milky Way and set up where you can see it, and you want it to be uh, visible through the entire scene. It's going to move during the night, so likely it's going to go from uh, east to west, so you want to try to get an idea of where that's going to be um, while the camera is shooting the, the images over probably a four hour period. Um, the wider the angle of the lens, the less of a problem it's going to be because you only because you're going to see a wider horizon line. Um, you know, make sure you have uh, the hand warmers. Um, the other thing you should do, what I tend to do, is I take my camera straps and try to wrap them around the tripod so that you don't have them swinging and swaying by the wind and possibly. Uh, causing some vibration on the camera during the shot. The, the other thing I would suggest is um, making sure you always double check that you're focused at infinity before you start shooting. Um, go ahead and make sure you're at your widest possible angle and, uh, and then play around. It, like I said, you're looking at exposures of probably 20 to 30 seconds. Um, you're looking at 300 to 400 images, so make sure your battery life can last that long, um, and make sure that uh, the that your memory card is able to hold that many images. This may mean you have to shoot JPEG. Uh, some of, some people prefer to shoot RAW, so you may need an 8 to 16 gig uh, card to do that, depending on how many megapixels you're shooting at and uh, and all that. All right, good luck.